because Adivanji is a big fan too. It's not every day you find out that someone famous lived in your house, but that's exactly what happened to a one-show viewer here in Brighton. I'm on a sort of pilgrimage because this street was once home to one of Britain's greatest artists, a real hero of mine. When Peter Harrop bought this house in 2010, he had no idea about its surprising history. After we'd been here about six months, my neighbour said, do you realise this may be the house that John Constable lived in? Born in 1776, John Constable is one of the most iconic landscape painters in history. Works like The Leaping Horse and his most famous painting, The Haywain, perfectly captured the beauty of the English countryside. Between 1824 and 1828, Constable and his family rented a house in Brighton, but for years its location remained a mystery. You can't just go around saying somebody famous lived here. Yeah. You have to actually prove it. As a painter himself, Peter was desperate to find out the truth, but his search didn't start well. He found a letter in the Tate Gallery that suggested Constable lived at a different address. Mrs. John Constable, 9 Mrs. Faber's Gardens, Brighton. It seemed he had drawn a blank until further research revealed that both his street name and house number had changed since Constable's time. It was a real revelation. It sort of made the hairs on the back of my neck sort of stand on end. Peter's kids loved living in a famous building, but it would have been crowded when the constables were here because they had seven children and staff to fit in. So while Peter has a dedicated studio, John Constable had to share. So why did Constable come to Brighton? Constable came to Brighton because his wife was, was unwell with tuberculosis. Right. And so while she was recuperating, he was out painting at the same time. Over the four years he spent here, Constable painted 150 landscape views. And Peter's new discovery gave him an idea to reunite these extraordinary paintings in the town where they were created. Working from the pictures, Peters discovered that Constable made three regular walks from his house in Brighton. And armed with a few reproductions of his paintings, we're going to follow in his footsteps. Our first stop is to try and find a viewpoint for one of his most famous paintings, Chain Pier. That building there is the Royal Albion. That, that's that, that, one. That's that building. Oh, and then you've right. got the sweep of Kemptown. Yeah moving away from you. Now, the chain pier was further away, about, further away. about half the way between here and the marina. Right. Um, and it was intended to take people to France. I can see exactly what he must have seen, but it's changed massively. With his wife critically ill, Constable's time in Brighton was a difficult one. And this painting, Rainstorm Over the Sea, shows Constable experimenting making spontaneous bold paintings that perhaps reflected his mood. So this little bit there is that... The, the, uh, that's Shoreham Harbour over Shoreham there. Shoreham yeah. Harbour, yeah. yeah. I just think it's one of the most dynamic pictures I've seen with just simple swipes, brush strokes. He really captured the mood on this day. After four productive years, Constable's time in Brighton ended when his wife Mariah passed away in 1828. But the paintings he created here have given us a real insight into the way he worked. And for our final image, I'm going to create a tribute of my own by updating his painting of Hove Beach. They were building that Brunswick yeah. Square. You can see the kiln just there. Yeah. Yeah. And that stood in the middle of Brunswick Square. Right, it. we're in the right spot. Constable would often paint pictures in a couple of hours. And I'm setting myself the same time limit as a bit of a challenge. The colour, the weather the mood, atmosphere, everything, and that would show right in his work, you know? Nearly 200 years after he died, we're still learning about one of Britain's best-loved painters, and I just hope my own effort does him justice. And there you have it, my tribute to my artistic hero, John Constable. Not bad in a few minutes, that is. Yeah, I don't know about it. Yeah. 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 If you would like to see more Constable's paintings, they are on display at the Brighton Museum until the 8th of October. Mm. Now, Andrew, interestingly, you studied a lot of art. Your mum was an art teacher, yeah, wasn't my, she? my mother was an art teacher, yeah. So I, 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 I got into art school, actually, but uh, 
show business took me the other way. So why then? What what was that change for you? I don't know. So you I, thought I, Hamlet is in the offing. <laughs> exactly. <aren't you? laughs> yeah. So I do. I feel. I feel. I'd love to go back to it at some point. Um, but uh, I, so that I suggests that you don't do it at all. Now. I do. I, I I I I do a little bit. I draw people sometimes on the tube. Because um, weirdly, Adibanji told us that he does that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah give, give them the drawing at the end so they don't feel. What do they make of it when you then <laughs> give them this this, this sketch? Know. Well, I don't know. I just get off. Get off.